Hello folks and welcome back to the program. Today I've got a big stack of wax today we're going to talk about. Before we begin this episode I want to thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell and all that good stuff. And check out Manza Illustrations. It's my personal business. Manza Illustrations is where I get you guys who want artwork, fantastic artwork, uh, delivered quickly and affordably uh, through Manza Illustrations. Check out the website. I can do any design work, logos, branding, etc. for you. T-shirts, uh, children's books. Check it out at manzaillustrations.com. And with that out of the way, let's get through this stack of wax. I went to a record show. It was... A great time came back with 11 records it was a really really fun time found a lot of great stuff my wife helped me dig through the crates even got a paper cut uh, she, this girl went to battle for me uh, she's a keeper for sure am I right <laughs> starting out the gate is Amagama by Pink Floyd a live album recorded at Mothers in Birmingham and Manchester College Adam Hart Mother a saucer full of secrets metal Amagama those albums really, really are uh, out there. This is out there stuff. This is before they became really, really mainstream. And let's look at this cover. This cover, fantastic from a photographer's standpoint. I was showing Steph this, uh, where you've got Gilmore sitting here and Roger Waters here. Then Gilmore steps out, Roger Waters sits here. Nick Mason sitting in, in, in order of how they're standing in the field. The composition and how it's done even before Photoshop is really, really a cool idea. I, I'm sure this was superimposed in this frame. I love how the, the writing is on the ground, Pink Floyd. I love the look of the band at this time. This was a prime time for the group. And man, does this record get out there. Since we're talking about Amagama, one of my favorite memories is my uncle uh, mentioning to check it out. He, and he, uh, this kind of music he'd put on and say, this is gonna scare you a little bit. And it, it's, uh, it's kind of scary. It's scary, but uh, really, entrancing in that way and to get into their headspace and, and they're such a great band they fed off each other so well and played off each other so well the careful with that axe eugene set the controls for the heart of the sun roger waters whispering like uh vague and and, and grandiose lyrics in the background uh, over this stuff and it gets pretty heavy in the middle a big drum solo and madness ensues in the in, the, in a lot of these what, what the formula is is it starts out small gets huge in the middle of this big jam track in the center and then it um and then by the end of it it, p it pans out in a little like silent way that is just awesome i find it funny that they put band band one band two band three band four up to band six uh, uh you know ending on side three with several species of furry animals gathered together in a cave i think the biggest compliments i can give this record are what roger waters contributed to this record um, his contribution is uh, out there and really cool. Grandchester Meadows, The End of Side 3. Fantastic, fantastic song. And there's a live version of it on YouTube that's even better. I used to love that as a kid, listening to that song. I used to love the acoustic guitar and the simplicity of it uh, and the lyrics of it. Grandchester Meadows, fantastic song. Sung by Roger Waters. Got the chance to see Roger Waters way back when uh, with my family. And to, geez, look at this gatefold. This gatefold is spectacular looking. Um, got pictures of the group, uh, Roger Waters and Jude in the middle, uh, Richard Wright on keyboard, David Gilmore lead guitar, and Nick Mason all throughout the bottom here on little stills. I love those black and white photos. Just an exquisite album. Uh, you're gonna pay about 30 bucks for a semi-decent copy of this. I highly recommend getting a great copy of it though. Dark Side of the Moon would originally come out on Harvest Records. Uh, I enjoy this pressing, it's fantastic, got a little pops and clicks still. Regardless of me cleaning it, cleaned it the best I could, we still got the pops and clicks with it. Either way, highly recommend Umagama and all of those mid-60s, all of those mid to late 60s Pink Floyd albums, I highly, highly recommend you check them out. Especially that album Metal, I mean, uh, uh, one of these days, that song, whew, a lot of simple rhythmic patterns from the percussion and a lot of spaciness to the organ uh, make for a soundscape uh, that's sometimes so out there for the ears, but yet pleasurable for the, um, for the mind to hear. Up next, I have Meatloaf uh, in lieu of his passing 
rest in peace meatloaf we have his bat out of hell record from what year ah 77 uh it's on epic records i have such memories with this record my mom putting it on in our first house when i was growing up uh we had a tiny little uh two bedroom house and she would blast this record she loves this record she still loves this record who would name themselves meatloaf <laughs> had no clue. I liked meatloaf as a dish for dinner, <laughs> but I didn't know about meatloaf as an artist until later on. And, uh, you know, I kind of just always grew up with him. My mom loving, loving him again. Uh, me saying that his great songs with a lot of operatic, uh, rock opera kind of grandiose moments in a lot of the, the music here. This album is a radio juggernaut. And the fact that every song has been on the radio, you can just drop the needle on that and just have it on a radio station and it would be a hit for everyone listening. Uh, this was a fantastic effort by Meatloaf uh, and one that I don't think he really uh, ever matched up to. Could, could we call him a one-hit wonder? I don't know, but a one-album wonder uh, kind of artist, I don't know, but I think that this was his absolute uh, magnum opus in that way. This was his absolute claim to fame, this record. It truly is a bat out of hell. I mean, the, the whole thing. You drop the needle and you're in a rock opera uh, of rock operas. I mean, just, this is just those mid-70s uh, tight band sound with that heavy hitting guitar. You got some great back and forth between the female lead and Meatloaf on this and it's just something to be listened to for sure i mean if you haven't checked out meatloaf this is in the range of you know queen and elo with that big grandiose sound rest in peace meatloaf uh, we're sorry to lose you but i love your album bad out of hell next up something i got for christmas uh sentimental journey ringo star this is a capital reissue it's one of those the green capital label probably doesn't sound as good as the original um but i'm happy to have it I love this cover. This is actually a pub, the uh, the Empress Pub, I believe. Uh, we've got superimposed pictures of Ringo uh, in the in the front there. This kind of reminds me of his mother. This um, this lady here walking in, uh, and little superimposed pictures of people in the windows of the pub. He's actually superimposed on the back cover as well. Uh, I actually really enjoy this record. Some great production to this album. And I love Ringo singing a song like that. I love his voice on that. I actually really dig the way that he sings a lot of these standards. He, he has a good appealing voice. It's kind of like listening, listening to Willie Nelson sing uh, standards. It's, it's pleasant. It's pleasant and fun to listen to. We've got some, uh, you know, swells in the music that come up and down. And it's engaging to listen to. And overall, a pretty passive experience when listening to it. You don't want to dedicate the time to sit in your easy chair and your Ames chair and you lay back in your listening room and put on Sentimental Journey. I don't think that's, uh, that's the way to go with this record. But in the background while you're working or cooking, it's perfect. Perfect addition to your background lounge kind of uh, crooner kind of if you will, kind of selections uh, from the master beetle himself, Ringo Starr. I believe he plays all the drums on this. I want to say he does. Swing and a miss for most. Some people think Boo Coops of Blues is his better record. I would probably agree with that. If you haven't checked out my episode where I meld all the Beatles albums together, the first 1970s solo albums all together and make a kind of a track listing from that, I highly recommend you check that out if you like the Beatles. Uh, you'd probably like that episode. Next up, we've got a old favorite, Harry Belafonte. Shake your body, Lena. Belafonte at Carnegie Hall. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, engaging record. I, heck, I was listening to this while making dinner, working, and it actually had me going. He's a good entertainer live. This is a great live album. The sound of the, the audience barely can hear it. They come in at the end and at the beginning and they pan them out so you can't even hear them. I will say I don't love live albums for that exact reason. You hear the crowd all too much and the band doesn't sound well miked uh, and recorded in that way. But this one, I can tell you firsthand, this is fantastic sounding, uh, high fidelity. When he does a song like Deo, I would prefer it over the original version. I mean, it, it's, it's haunting, it's slower and you hear the background singers really come into play with their harmony. He really does a great job of picking songs that will engage the, the, 
the um, the audience, Matilda gets the whole audience singing Matilda at the end, uh, and everybody's having a great time by the end of this show. Uh, he does songs like Cotton Fields, and um, he does some standards, and he does he does standards in kind of a jazzy way, uh, which I wasn't expecting. And then he does his signature calypso uh, music as well. Very cool. And this is on the RCA Victor label. You've all seen that. You could find a decent copy in the wild. I actually got this from Discogs. I needed it and I was craving some Belafonte. So um, great music to uh, clean the house with, vacuum, or cook, or whatever you wanna do. It sounds fantastic, I highly recommend. Pretty quickly, I wanna talk about this next one. Uh, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Whipped cream and other delights. Uh, you've all seen this record in the junk store and the dollar bin and the in, you know wherever you, records may be found you will find this record repressed uh, originals filthy copies clean copies and it's uh, it's a pretty famous record this I got off of discogs as well it came with a nice little uh, plastic inner sleeve on a m records the original a taste of honey and my favorite lady fingers is on this record to find a clean copy of this you just have to go on either discogs or ebay because anything you'll find in the wild is going to be a little crackly and poppy uh, for me and and that is not going to do i used to collect a lot of uh herb alpert i got rid of some of his stuff that i had i have some of it in the in the uh, way back I don't really listen to it, but this one I'll play not only for its famousness, but that song Lady Fingers uh, is just so, so transportive and relaxing. It's a famous track. Uh, check it out if you want to just sit back and relax with a good drink, cocktail, cigar perhaps, uh, any of that uh, is a perfect accompaniment uh, musically for that kind of thing. Fun fact about this, this is not all whipped cream. It really on first glance makes you think that there's whipped cream all over this person uh, when there isn't. It's shaving cream and a blanket. Up next in talking about that kitschy kind of 60s uh, transportive exotica style stuff, we've got Martin Denny. I love Martin Denny, any of his stuff. I'd like to complete my collection. So best ofs are in that accompaniment of all of his stuff I'd love to collect. Uh, in the shrink, nice, we've got uh, music is your best entertainment. Uh, little hype sticker there. It is, that's true. The United Artists label, kinda cool. This is a very quiet pressing, very good. I like the kind of uh, zenfulness to this, like uh, this pond water uh, with this white flower, I like that. This was on my want list and somebody got it for me, thank you. Classic songs like Quiet Village, Bali High, Hawaiian Wedding Song, Ebb Tide, Tiny Bubbles, A Taste of Honey are on here. Just your classic kitschy 60s fare. The music of Martin, the music of Martin Denny in and of itself is uh, an art. Uh, what he did musically was innovative and fantastic. If you love vibraphone, if you love uh, exotica, uh, mellow kind of. Uh, on a rainy night, you make some cocktails and you put this on and you feel like you are in uh, the tropics uh, when it could be snowing outside. Uh, my wife and I are recently doing that. We're listening to all those kinds of playlists on the weekend and just wishing we were somewhere warmer uh, with some Martin Denny and some Exotica, Les Baxter. Uh, it's the way to go if you love that kind of stuff. Next up, a classic. We've got Gary McFarlane's Soft Samba. Uh, Soft Samba is fantastic on Verve Records. It's got a nice little laminated cover jacket in front of a Mole Poblano stand. Uh, he's, he's either in a restaurant or I don't even know where he is, uh, but he's sitting on what looks like to be a checkered table. Um, it's a pretty famous record. I heard it uh, on a playlist for the first time somewhere. I said, I gotta have that on vinyl. Absolutely had to have this on vinyl. I do collect Verve records. I like a lot of their stuff. The Righteous Brothers are on Verve, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and classic things like uh, a lot of good jazz and a lot of great, great sounds to the pressings. Great sound to all of these pressings. I love Verve records. And uh, I like the back cover, just simple. And it lets you know that this is gonna be kind of a, a lounge kind of feel. And this has been hole punched, so you know it was in the dollar bin at some point. This features Lennon McCartney tracks like, And I Love Her, She Loves You, uh, 
A Hard Day's Night. And the way he does it, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're along for the ride for this record, you'll see he's not trying to uh, kill it with his singing and his uh, uh, vibrato and his, uh, and, his, and his big boastful voice. No, he's, he's not doing that. He's singing quietly along as if his, his voice was a, a horn or an instrument. Uh, he's using it in the kind of soft samba way, uh, similar to how the girl from Ipanema is sung. That kind of s that soft samba style is uh, featured in here throughout. Uh, it's constant, and it's a it's, it's a great record to again cook to, lounge to, relax to, have company over and play this. Uh, you can go no wrong. I highly recommend "Soft Samba" uh, by Gary McFarland. How cool is this? You get the soft samba cocktail. Pour two ounces of dry Spanish sherry over two ice cubes in an old fashioned glass. Add half an ounce of tropical fruit juice or pineapple juice and a dash of bitters and you've got the soft samba cocktail. You can make that along with this. That is a pretty cool feature. Never saw that till just now. See, I'm learning things on this show. I think I'll make that a little later. That's great. I like that. Up next, I want to talk about a little 7-inch. I got Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. God, do I love that song. Jeez, Mark Knopfler kills it on this record. This little 7-inch, clean, crisp as could be. I was so happy to find it at the local record show I just went to in, uh, in Dedham, Massachusetts. was able to find this. I was like, yeah, I'm snagging that for sure. What's even cooler is that the entire riff in that song and a lot of his stuff, heck, all of his stuff, is done with his hands. He finger picks the entire intro. The sound difference shows. The difference in sound and that guitar shows because he's using his fingers, his fingernails to pick. Put your shades on, it's cool. For me, that song Money For Nothing is kind of the MTV age. I believe it was the first song ever on MTV. And it just kind of, uh, it, it's showing uh, what you can see on MTV from all these different kinds of people. He uses some expletives uh, in, the, in kind of one of the verses, two of the verses uh, that kind of get you thinking uh, what he thinks about some of the, the artists that are featured on MTV or will be featured. And, uh, you know, you got some restored microwave ovens, custom kitchen delivery between commercials. Uh, you see some music. And that's kind of what he's talking about, I think. Uh, he's talking about the commercials between what you see on the mute on the screen for MTV you, you see music and commercials music and commercials is basically the oversaturation of the music business on MTV is what they're talking about I think uh, you let me know what you think money for nothing is about sometimes I don't have too much faith in 45s but this really really shows it's like it's like I had a record on. It's high fidelity, and I'm really happy with it. A lot of the 45s I ever put on are poppy and clicky and horrible and tinny sounding, a lot of them. But you know, maybe it's because it's from the 80s on Warner Brothers uh, records. Um, you know, they, they pumped out some great stuff toward the end of the vinyl craze. And that'll do it for this uh, stack of wax episode. I want to thank you for watching to the end of the video. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And with that out of the way, you could find me lounging to a melody. Take care, folks, and thank you for watching. Bye bye. <music>